What do a dishwasher leak and arguments against God's existence have in common? Stay tuned to find out. Hello friends, it's good to be with you as always. Thanks for taking a few moments to spend with me today. Um, this past week at the Westermeyer household, we had a little minor household disaster. Our dishwasher, which we've had I suppose for eight or nine years, uh, sprung a leak and it's flooded our kitchen and the bedroom directly beneath the kitchen um, and it was kind of a mess. And in fact, as we tape this, we are still uh, cleaning up after that. And I want to, I'm not saying this to whine or to complain. Everything's going to be okay. And uh, it's just stuff. No one was injured. Everything can be replaced and repaired. So, um, but it got me thinking about where we are in the church year. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. We're approaching the end of the church year. Um, and so this is a time during the church year when appropriately we are talking about end times or end things or the day of judgment when Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead. And um, the dishwasher experience conflated with the end of the year it got me thinking about a particular subject that I wanted to spend a little time this morning with. And it's not actually, I mean, one direction I could have gone is that we are cleaned in the same way that dishes are cleaned before we finally see God. And that I suppose is a path we could take. But I was actually thinking about something I just said a couple minutes ago, which is it will be okay. Our house is going to be put back in order. Uh, the, the things that were damaged are going to be replaced. We will get through it. And one of the critiques that uh, people who are not people of faith have of people of faith is that we say the same kind of thing, or that's our same posture about how it will all end up, right? We believe as people of hope, as resurrection people, that at the end, it will be okay. Uh, that despite the pain and grief and challenges of this world, God's love will triumph and all will be set right. Some of the people who critique Christianity say, well, you Christians, that's just, they, they'll call it something like wish fulfillment or that's just your projections. It's, it's wishful thinking. It's how you want things to end up. <clears throat> and the simple point I want to make today is that that argument cuts both ways. People like that are welcome to make that critique about Christians, but Christians can just as easily make the critique of people who make it of us. In other words, they say, well, you all just want things to end up okay. You want there to be a loving God. That's your wish. And so you project that onto reality. I would say back to them, well, maybe you wish there isn't a God. Maybe you wish that one day you will not stand in judgment of a God who has created all things. And so maybe your worldview in which you say there is no God, there is no creator, is simply your wish projection. Again, we could spend a lot more time with that, but as with most critiques or arguments against Christianity, they aren't quite as simple as they seem on the surface. And when you poke at them a bit, you discover that very often you can use those same arguments against the people who are criticizing Christianity. I hope that makes sense. And if there are questions, please include them below. A final postscript to this um, commentary I'm making this morning, I guess. Uh, this past Sunday, <clears throat> we played, uh, or actually my son played on the cello uh, as the offertory, a well-known hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Many of you may know it. Many people wrote in and said they were grateful for it. Um, one of the people who wrote to me, a member here, uh, reminded me of, a, of the story of that hymn. I am not going to recount it here, but it's the story of a family that went through terrible, awful, tragedy, uh, not once but many times in their lives, and the father of that family ended up writing that hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. We will link, uh, to those of you who are Downton Abbey fans, we'll link to uh, the story of that as retold by Hugh Bonneville, one of the main characters from Downton Abbey, along with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. It's worth a listen. But that story is a reminder, absolutely, that yes, our faith gives us hope. No question about that. 
but it's also a reminder that our faith spurs us on to make God's kingdom a reality here and now, to reach out to each other in love and support and care. And I pray that today, as we approach the end of the church year, we will be able to do that. Thanks as always for spending some time with me. Be well, stay in touch, and God bless. Yeah.